My name is Amber Lodiger Reichert, and I'm a web developer with the University of Virginia's Miller Center. The Miller Center focuses on study of the presidency and seeks to apply lessons of history to modern life. In the course of building presidentialcollections.org, we've interviewed many organizations who had questions about best practices when it comes to web communication. This video is intended to provide some general guidelines for improving your organization's online presence. With the complexity of many modern organizations, one of the most common challenges facing web teams today is the fight against chaos. A chaotic website divides your user's attention and hurts your user experience, which means visitors can get frustrated and leave with a negative feeling about your organization as a whole. They may not even return again. But a positive user experience leads to repeat visitors, word of mouth publicity, and can even lead to better visibility in search engine results. In this video, I'll cover five areas that will help you improve your presence online. Think of your users first. Set clear goals. Tailor content for the web. Adopt clear language. And use balanced calls to action. We all know how it goes. Growth over time can easily lead to clumsy or overly complex websites. You start with a beautiful website. Then your organization grows, so you add new things. But what about this special project? Where will we put that? We should definitely make social media more prominent. And you end up pretty far from the clean design you started with. Here are a few guidelines for keeping the chaos at bay. This is by far the most important thing. A good website is built thinking first and foremost about its users. Your first question for any site update should be, how will this affect my site visitors? Maybe it makes the site faster or more pleasant to interact with, or makes popular information easier to access. Often, though, it's more complicated. For example, we may want to put a donate button in giant red letters on the homepage, or force visitors to read about a new project before they can access the content they're used to. Proceed very cautiously with things like this. Remember that visitors on your site are busy, distracted, and they have the whole internet at their fingertips. If they get frustrated or confused on your site, they're very likely to simply leave and go elsewhere. But when we build websites with users' needs in mind, they stay longer on the site, return more often, and retain a positive view of the organization as a whole. If our visitors' attention is so fragile, how should we make changes to our websites? Generally, the best way is to have these two questions in mind. What do my users want from my site? and how can I deliver it to them in the fastest, clearest way. As long as updates or changes to your site aren't getting in the way of those priorities, fire away. Your visitors will be pleased to find what they're looking for and enticed to stay longer as you add new content and build a richer user experience. A website simply can't do everything at the same time. Remember the chaotic website in the beginning of this video? Not having site goals is the quickest way to a chaotic site. Here are some common goals for websites. Which of these is most important to you? The best websites have a very short list of prioritized goals, and all decisions about that site are made with those goals in mind. Let's look at a few examples. This is the homepage for Netflix, the video streaming service. So Netflix might have chosen any number of priorities for this homepage. They could have chosen to highlight new custom television shows that they've made, or to encourage users to upgrade their service. But instead, with the presence of this very prominent tagline and the big red button, they've clearly chosen to use the space to encourage new customers to sign up. And in fact, uh, all of this space in the top, and if you scroll down, is dedicated to that one goal of getting new users to sign up and convincing them that this is the service that they want to pay for. 
So let's look at one with a little bit more nuance. Wikipedia. This is the English-speaking Wikipedia homepage. Out of all the priorities we listed earlier, I would say their number one goal here is answering the question, what does the site do? And while the site is a little busy and certainly text heavy, <laughs> um, most pieces of content on this page are reinforcing that goal of explaining what the heck is this site. There's a very short tagline here, and there are popular topics to browse. There are specific entries below that are featured based on news and historic anniversaries, but all of these pieces are in service to demonstrating what this site is all about. So in this case, the edges of the site, the left edge here and the top, is used to bring more complex information. There's a long list of tools and um, other options here, but again, that text is de-emphasized and placed on the edges of the site rather than in your main field of vision. So let's look at one more. Healthcare.gov has gotten a lot of attention because of its initial rough rollout, but uh, because of that, I think they've built a pretty great site. So what this site does really well is cater to its users' interests above all else. There are a lot of topics that could have been prioritized here, like the shifting legislation or specific medical plans or even just a basic what does this program do um, informational presentation. But what they've chosen to do instead is prioritize common user questions and let that content show what the site does rather than telling it explicitly with a large mission statement or explanatory video. So I'm going to do something a little different here and look at the mobile version of this site because the mobile version is where an organization has to make the most choices. Incidentally, you may want to look more into the mobile first movement, which suggests that when you're planning a website, you should think about mobile first since it's your most restrictive medium. It forces you to make the hard choices early on and thus makes the rest of the site development easier since you can add information as screens get bigger, not subtract. So we're looking at the mobile version. So let's look quickly top to bottom at the choices they've made. Here on the mobile version of the site, those priorities are even more clear. The site exists first and foremost to answer common visitor questions when it comes to their relationship with their healthcare. If I'm a user, I might want to know, is this even relevant to me? Do I have the option of signing up? I've already signed up. Can I change my plan? Hold on, what is this? <laughs> um, how can I upload documents to verify my information? That's probably a common question that they get, a common problem. Or I'm doing my taxes, where do I get my relevant paperwork? And then finally, where can I get more information? Which is what the bottom of, of this site is basically dedicated to. That if your questions are not answered with the information at the top, that uh, further down, it gives you options for finding out more information. So again, this is a huge site. They certainly have audiences other than people looking for healthcare information. But because connecting people to plans is their main goal, they've relegated those secondary audiences to a less prominent place. Here at the bottom, actually, we can see that secondary information, which they've chosen to have on their site, but in a very de-emphasized kind of way since those are secondary goals and secondary audiences. So we've looked at three very different examples here. A site built to get new customers, a site built to disseminate information, and a site built to answer questions in order to help people interact with a complex service. The main takeaway here for us is pretty straightforward. If you know specifically what you want your site to accomplish, your visitors will too, and it will be much more likely to succeed towards that goal. If you don't know specifically what your site is supposed to accomplish, your visitors won't know either.